This is another look at Gaia. We looked at her before, but when we looked at her before, she was above, painted above. But now we're going to see that she's also painted again on the floor right below. And this is very important because the story here is we're not just looking at art, but actually this is the language of creation. And we're entering into a journey, quite literally. And that as we look one direction, it tells us part of the story. But then it says, now look down. Let me tell you another part. But think of a dancer. It changes the phrase. It changes where we are looking. And that's very important, a bit like the 3D effect in the hieroglyph of the human soul. Because the glasses are saying, if you look at me one way, Look at me again, I'm a conversation, I'm not a statement. That's not an interesting relationship. That's something you put in your pocket and you take. What I want is to engage you. And that's why as we look at this, this started to tell me a fascinating story. The mystery of two wombs. Meaning why are we composed of seemingly what we think of as an eternal quality, and that we live in time, we're going to live and die. And what this started to show me, with the story of the heron below, we can see, and above we'll see the mother and the infant within the womb. And it started to refer to Gaia as matter, mater, mother, meaning the gift we are given from our mother, from our, our father. We are woven of matter, mater, mother. We are woven of the story, of the genetics, of the DNA. And this is very important because we're not given something incomplete. We're given that which is whole and holy. This is the human form divine. It's our moment within it, but it itself, like a piano, is a structure, a quality, an instrument that we are meant to engage. And part of the question of how to engage it is how do we balance what is seemingly eternal and that which has to do with time? And this image starts to suggest a very fascinating relationship because the heron will show us that it is holding essentially the eye of Ra. Now the Ra, the ancient Egyptian god of the eternal, is this eye of the eternal. And if we think of this eye on the top of our head, this eye that we enter into time with, but we don't enter because we see, we enter because we are being drawn forth. And that as we stand up, we shift into these two eyes but what the heron is trying to relate is that when we look down and we see, as a tree sees, that we are being, and this is the relationship to the toroid, meaning this, this movement we see often like this. It's bringing the energy up through the body, out through the top of the head, and circulating it back down through the feet. Why this is important is it would say that the eye of the eternal, of the phoenix, of Ra, of the heron, is that which is constantly circulating, but it's not optical, it's life. But the mother, the qualities of Gaia, says that you are a unique quality. You live in a unique body at a unique time, but your story is whole and holy. So trust the eye of the eternal that you cannot see, like the spine, like the, the trunk of the tree connected to its roots. Because this is the eternal, we'd say this is the knowledge of the ancient father, meaning the form behind the mystery. And then the mother says, ah, but my gift is that I enter time as the body that gives you the gift to experience the eternal I within the temporal I. And if we had a bit more etiquette, we'd realize that this is quite a love story. We've just separated it. And that's why it came home to Olandar, to the hieroglyph of the human soul, to say, let's, let's stand on it for a while. Let's think. And when we look up, we'll see Gaia and say, thank you. I'm beginning to appreciate just how much has gone into all of this so I could be. Remember that. It's you as well. Thank you.